Broadcasting from the heart of downtown Hollywood, this is SoFloRadio.com. Z Nation. Z Nation. Where consciousness is queen, love really is the answer. And making a difference is on the menu. Z Nation. Organic beats and inspiring treats. Get your weekly dose of vitamin Z now. now. This is Z Nation on SoFloRadio.com. Everyone, this is Zena the Gaia, and this is Z Nation live from Hollywood, Florida, at SoFloRadio.com. Namaste, greetings, blessings, everybody. <laughs> yeah, whoo! So today, today is another day. Yes, it is another beautiful day. South and Florida. It is another beautiful day. We're very blessed day. to be here. And wherever you are, there's beauty in all of it. You know, there's beauty. Wow, I'm just looking out this window. I absolutely love to watch the space between the leaves as they shimmer. Yeah. It's like the that space. That shows the sky. Yeah, and it represents so much. It's like the subtle. The subtle is where God is. The subtle is where the eternal is. It's where the divine, the sacred is. So, um... Wow, today, so much to talk about. Um, I, I, and just tuning into that, I, I'm going to just talk a little bit about meditation. Meditation, this is one of, uh, one of my practices that I'm committed to. And the reason that I'm so passionate about meditating is because I think it's so important and it heals one of, um, I would say, the main problems or the main concerns of being human, and that is the, the mind. It helps to heal our mind. And when we heal our mind, we heal everything. We heal our body, we heal our relationships, we heal our humanity. Because the confusion is, as a human being, we're like, am I my body? Am I my mind? Right. Am I spirit? And then finding the balance between the three and honoring all three and how we honor the mind in my experience, is observing it, getting to know it, questioning the thoughts that come out of this mind and beginning to master, I'm going to say, and tame this mind because it's like a wild animal. I, I know it really is, and especially mine. It's, it's, <laughs> it's you and all of us, you know, and, and it, it all, it, the, the root of suffering begins in the mind and you know, our mind is a beautiful thing. It's, uh, it's, it's part of our humanity. It's what allows us to do what we do in this life. And if we are not conscious of it, the mind will run us. It will do its thing, and its thing can be vicious. However, if we learn to master the mind, if we learn to tame it, we learn to observe it, and we learn to love it, you know, like really embrace it, then we can, we can use the mind to have a happier, more peaceful life. So the other day I um, had the opportunity to sit with a, a good friend. And I say that I had the opportunity to sit with her because recently I've discovered I don't take enough time to actually really be with people because I'm so freaking busy. And busy is a state of mind. It's something I've created for myself so I can just avoid being with stuff. And so I've been really like simplifying my life a lot more and using more of my time to connect with people and really be present with them. So, you know, she walked in and I was in the middle of, you know, eight different things on my to-do list. And I just felt there was it was an opportunity to be with her. There was something going on with her and I wanted to connect. So we sat down and I said, how are you? And the first thing she said, she's like, oh, I'm just so depressed. 
And I said to her, well, welcome to being human. Sure. Welcome to humanity. Or, you know, and I've, and I've been hearing that many times. Uh, or, or another friend said to me, yeah, I've been diagnosed um, bipolar by my doctor. Or I've been, di- I've been diagnosed as depressed, like I have depression. And I said, okay, well, you know, well, maybe you don't have to own it. You know, maybe sure. you don't have to own the depression. And, and you know, I'm not a, I'm not a medical doctor, so I, I speak from my experience, you know, and, and, and really this is all my point of view. I mean, I, I experienced depression also, you know, and I've experienced depression, and I say quotes depression, but what I've come to realize, it's like we label it depression, and then it means all this stuff. And that that's related to somebody who's depressed or somebody who has who is bipolar or even schizophrenia. I mean, we're all fucking wackos walking around with multiple <laughs> personalities talking to the different voices in our heads. And I don't say that to undermine, you know, people who are dealing with that, you know, like like really dealing with it. I say that to really lighten up about it because the mind is something we all have as human beings. Sure. I've been experimenting with Tourette's lately. Although I don't utter profanities. Yeah. <laughs> it took I just... me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? A beret? Something yeah, you put no, on your head? Barrettes. Oh, Tourette's. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't hurl obscenities. I break into Warner Brothers Bugs Bunny songs, you know, like just <laughs> out of nowhere. You know, I'll just start singing Kill the Rabbit. Or... That's funny yeah. you said that. <laughs> even like, even that, Tourette's, is that... it's so funny because some we all have some kind of like little thing that we do or that we express and some of us we don't express it instead we express it internally and we stuff it in and we hurt ourselves or we like stuff it out and you know um reflect it out to the world and then we hurt other people and but we all do that and 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 the point is you know to label these things and then have all these attachments to what they're supposed to be and then the 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 subtitles under you know somebody who's depressed what does that mean and do you so think people use it a lot and in the wrong way? Do you think people use it as a figure of speech and and they don't mean clinically, they just mean I'm just bumming? Uh, you know, I never know what people mean when they say that. Well, there's different ways. Some people are told by their doctors, you have depression. Sure. And now it's like, I'm labeling myself, I have depression. It's like, you know, if you've had a, a tumor, you know, a cancerous tumor for several years and you don't know, so you're just living your life, living your life, living your life. And then you go to the doctors and they say, you have cancer. No, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Now you are somebody with cancer. You've had the tumor, though. It was there. And it's the same thing with depression. Like, you've had these thoughts. I've, you know, I grew up a, a very sad little girl, and, like, these thoughts that I'm having in my mind as a 35-year-old are the same freaking thoughts I used to have as a 13-year-old, but now they've just evolved. So it, it's... And somebody to come and tell me, oh, you've been diagnosed with depression because, you know, you're not able to maintain your emotions stably is crazy. Here's what I see. And here's the opportunity. Um, And, you know, suffering is suffering. We all suffer at different levels, but we all suffer. Suffering is suffering no matter where you are, you know. And Buddhism. Yeah. All existence is suffering. Here's a quote. The first noble truth. Actually, mentioning buddhism i was just reading this the buddha was asked what have you gained from meditation he replied nothing right however the buddha said let me tell you what i lost anger anxiety depression insecurity and fear of old age and death i believe the symptoms of depression come from one thing and that thing is disconnection and what i mean is disconnection from source so let's say source is god or whatever you want to call it it's that glimmer behind all of our eyes that's similar what we all have in common you know when i look at you now george your eyes are alive because there's a soul behind there and when that soul leaves, those eyes are not going to have that little glimmer right. anymore. It sure. goes away. So whatever you want to call that, I'm going to call it source. Okay? okay. So when when we are connected to source, and that could be through, come on in, Lonnie. Lonnie's here. Oh, the key on, the shelf. <laughs> on the other end of the building. The key on the shelf. Sorry, yeah. she wanted to use the 
facilities. We have a guest. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so source. So when we are not connected to source, we start to experience, you know, emotions such as depression and um, negative emotions. Sure. Now, source can be accessed in different ways. So, for example, you know, for me, I know when I go into downward spirals where I'm not in the, we're going to call it the vortex, or when I'm not in positivity or possibility, what makes a difference for me is sharing with others. And it's okay. super scary to because, you know, when you're, we're going to call it depressed, what you do is you start to close doors. You start to not answer phone calls. You start to not answer your door. You start to close all the doors so you can isolate yourself more and more. So the more you're going towards isolation, the deeper the darkness is. So to come out of the darkness, you start to, you've got to reach out. Now, when you reach out to another human being, somebody you feel safe with, and you share your vulnerability, your fears, and what's going on with you, suddenly you've connected to source. Okay. Source is inside the other person. Another way to connect to source is to serve. Service heals, just like sharing. An example of that is, this is something I, I try to do as often as I can, and it does get me out of my funks. So if I'm dealing with something and I'm not in a good space, you know, I may meditate, I may do whatever I need to do to like recover my... my um, my ability to function in the world. And then I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll may f- make a phone call to somebody and say, hey, is there anything I can help you with today? Or I'll look where I can serve. And service isn't like, you don't have to be like Mother Teresa going to Africa and feeding starving children. You can just just go to freaking downtown Hollywood and go to the Publix there Sure. And, and be kind to somebody, but that that form of service when we when we take our attention from our I'm going to call it pettiness, okay? Okay. And and I'm I'm really relating to myself, and that's how when I really observe what's going on in the world and what's available, everything starts to seem petty over here. And I'm going to also say this, though I'm talking about it like very matter of factly, I know by experience sometimes it's not as easily said as easily done as I'm saying, like sometimes when you're in it, you're in it. And you know, it may take you a minute to come out. It may take you a few days to reach out to somebody. But when you start to practice, it's like a muscle, the practice of sharing and being vulnerable, you build that muscle. So maybe, you know, one year ago, you would sit in your funk for a week. Okay. All right. And just watch Netflix and eat chocolate. And I'm not saying those things are bad or whatever it is that you do that like get, gets you further and further down. Sit in my funk sounds like I just haven't showered for a week though. If that's like yours. Funky. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and then, you know, maybe a year ago it took you a week to come out and then, you know, practicing, practicing you, now it takes you two days. So you've got to start to see the effort. You've got to start seeing the improvement in in this. Hi, Lonnie. Hi. Let's get you right here, girl. Put it on her left side. Come sa? No. The other <laughs> left? <laughs> That's my left. This before, this before me? Excellent. Because we're on camera. And we want to see you. Oh, I see. We are on camera. Yes, and so does everyone else. All right. <laughs> I've got some color in the room now. <laughs> so, Lonnie, we're, we're, we're talking about the, um, the label of depression. When people say I'm depressed or um, I've been diagnosed with depression, okay, and um, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sharing for me heals. Serving, taking the attention off of me and how I can serve others, how I could serve humanity, how I can serve the planet, that heals. Sure. It always works, and and sometimes it takes something to do it. My biggest message is. Be super kind to yourself. Be so freaking generous to yourself and give yourself a lot of room, you know, and like just notice the small improvements. If, you used to, if, if it used to take you, you know, a week to come out of a funk and now it takes you a day, acknowledge, acknowledge that, that step, you know, because it's like we want the instant gratification. Give me a pill so I can get better now. <laughs> yeah, did you bring any? 
take this (laughs) (laughs) take this shit away from me now i want it (laughs) gone and we take the pill and we feel yeah. better but what it does it actually just makes everything worse in the it's big it's still picture. there after yeah. sure it doesn't and make it go away we're it's not healing the roots no and we're eternal souls we we're so wise we know this stuff this short term stuff is comes from looking through the world and the physicalness of it and not seeing the multi-dimension, the multi-layers of who we are and what the world is. The big picture is we're not healing our bodies, we're healing our souls. We have karma, we have we have things to heal from multiple lifetimes. And in this life, we're all here because we're up to something really big. We know who we are. Yeah. Mm, looking in my mirror here, <laughs> my teacher. Oh, now one more thing that I'll add t- for me that is like um, I call it the cure, the cure to the the ailment of of feeling unworthy, feeling like life doesn't matter, or feeling like we don't matter. Is really look, look in your life, look who you were as a child. What did you do as a child that you loved? And do whatever the fuck you love and do that all the time. And it's funny because when I tell this to people, I'll say, so what do you love to do? And I get these blank stares. It is a very yeah. difficult yeah. question to answer. We, for, we forgot. There's so many, so many layers that, that uh, you know, that we got to build around ourselves, especially the heart. We protected mm-hmm. our heart so much that we not even, not only um, disconnected from knowing ourselves, but also from our not loving ourselves fully. And I feel that, I, and I had the same thing many times, uh, not only with myself, but many people. Like, what, what did you like to do? I have no idea, they tell me. So one of the things that I realized mm-hmm. is that we can start by what you don't like to do. What are the things you don't like? So do you like to sit down in an office from 9 to 5 and just uh, fill out papers and forms and things like that? Do you like numbers? Oh, no, I like nature. So there you go. You like nature. Yeah. So do you like to hug people and encourage people and be with people? Oh, yeah, I love that. So And I do that with myself. Yeah. But going back to the depression thing, that you, the subject that you were talking about, I want to add a couple of things, if it's okay. Uh, Please. First of all, I've been through depression myself, so um, I know what it is. It's not something that I talk because it, I read something about it. Yes, I read a lot, but I've been depressed. So, and uh, it, and you know, it, it's interesting because once you have it, it comes. It can, and it comes regularly. The thing is that we shift who we are. So our, our perception towards um, something that happened in the past, uh, it's different. We become less reactive. And we we go through that same situation, but from a different place. Uh, I realized that two things work for me. One, it's going through the moment of darkness and just, you know, kind of crossing my own pain, understanding what I'm going through, where is it coming from, going to the roots. Um, it's like connecting with my pain. Why, why are you here? What's your, because they're messengers. So what, what are you trying to tell me? So if I run away from you, you want to come back. It's you're like my shade that's following me, right? So would, what are you here for? Tell me, tell me why you're here. Sometimes I can find it. Sometimes it takes some time. Sometimes it's a recurrent thing that continuously comes because the message is not learned. <laughs> so uh, when the message is not learned, then the situation comes back with a different shape, a different people, uh, somewhere in space. It doesn't matter. Mm. And another thing that I realized that works for me is trying to convince myself that I'm okay. So I do something good. For me, you know, I like to help people, so helping people helps. Um, Giving support to other people, but also pretending, let's let's say that one of the issues is like my hair is frizzy. Let's pretend that my depression is because my hair is completely frizzy. So (laughs) yeah, that's silly, but it's an an example. So I put some gel that day and my hair is wonderful and I'm going out with a beautiful hair and I'm like cheating, lying to myself. But I, I guess that we get to a point that those lies to yourself become your reality. Yeah. We can we can reprogram ourselves yes. and then you end up feeling my hair. It's fantastic. That's so great, Lonnie. Thank you for putting that in. You're and welcome. you know, that's <laughs> that's so beautiful. It just all ties back in, you know, to healing the mind and getting to the root of things, like you were saying. And 
you know, those three things, sharing with other people, connecting to source through people, serving humanity, and doing what you love, you know, and really, you know, from there, I love what you said because there are different tools that we can use to yeah. reprogram the mind. You know, somebody asked me that in yoga class yesterday because I was talking about this, and she said, but is it really possible? I said, well, listen, you've spent how many years? 30 years programming your brain as it is now. Yeah. Everything you've ever done, everything you've ever seen has created neural pathways in your brain. And that's what the brain does. Yeah. So, and guess what? If you believe in past lifetimes, those neural pathways transfer from lifetime to lifetime. Fully. That's what the Buddhists say. Fully. So you're carrying samskaras or karma from different lifetimes. And we can translate them into like the brain patterns because it's, it, it's all this background stuff that we're not present to but it's running our entire show yes so yes, yes can we reprogram the mind yes but you want to be like you said be patient yeah. be kind to yourself it took you how many years to get to this who you are right now so to think we're just now because we, we're awake and we're conscious people we should be happy all the time no, and no, we should no. be positive all the time that's a lie no <laughs> it's be authentic about where you're at and that's the vulnerability yeah. Yeah. that's the muscle we got to keep training ourselves open up keep opening up because that's where the light is stay with the light stay with me stay with my eyes let me see your eyes so i can see myself look into mine so i can hold you and that's that's, that's so beautiful yeah, that's the juice you know what don miguel Ruiz, the writer the mexican beautiful writer yes. says and that we we have agreements there's agreements and agreement that we are victims agreement that we are successful people agreements that we are con, uh, conditioned to do this or that. So agreement, what is an agreement? It's an, something that we can break and start a new agreement. Mm. What if we decide that we wanna be happy? So that's our agreement. We can actually define that contract with ourselves and then move from that day on with that agreement. Beautiful. All right, wow, agreements. Well, my agreement today is to love myself. And that's, that's, that's um, it's such a broad term you know, and I'm discovering for myself what that means. And it's all kinds of different stuff. It could just be choosing to go to yoga class instead of working. Instead of, you know, checking four more things off of my to-do list today. You know, I'm going to re-promise to these people and I'm going to go take a yoga class. And I'm going to, you know, really do it. Or, or, you know, choosing to go watch the sunrise. That's so beautiful. Or whatever it is. I would love to play a love song. I'd love to play a love song. <laughs> so listen, before you play it, uh, my intention is like, I love finding pop songs, like popular songs, hip hop, R&B, pop, whatever, that are like really conscious. I love discovering artists yeah. who are like out there and they have a huge reach and they're like singing about consciousness and love and forgiveness, right? So, but today what I did is, this is MC Yogi. I love MC Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> He's really popular in the yoga world, but I want him to go out. So this is one of his songs. No? Oh, but you can play that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what we were listening to. Well, I think this is MC Yogi. It is. Yes. Well, this is great. It's a sampling of his yogi music. I'll find it. <laughs> okay. But this song he wrote for Starbucks. And it's a song that kind of went mainstream. It was marketing. Okay. All right. But this is what's possible. Oh, so yeah. let's imagine this song going mainstream. All right. I it's think this is the one you want. Pa yes. <laughs> Power 96. Okay. <laughs> Every little thing's going to be all right. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Every little thing's going to be okay. Open up your heart. Unlock the key. need to dance. Turn the key. Give love away. Tell him, MC. Give love. Give you love away. Give love. Don't be afraid. Give love. Give you love away now. Give love. It'll be okay. Give love. Give you love away. Give love. Give you love away. Give love. Give you love away now. Give love. Give you love away. Love is life and life is living. Living is love and love is giving. When we live for love, it gives life meaning. When we live to give love, there's no way to feel in this feeling of kindness. And love's inside us. Nobody can sell this or try to buy this. Cause love is priceless and it guides us, lifts us up and ignites us. Love can bind us and remind us. Love has no limit cause love is timeless. Hate and fear will try to blind us. But love unites us. Nobody can fight this cause love is righteous and it might just save the whole world. Open up your heart and let it shine the brightest. Give you love, give you love away. Give you love away now. 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 Give you love
It'll be okay. So that was MC Yogi Give Love. Isn't that a great song? It's like so catchy and um, just the right message. So the vision, seeing more conscious, loving music so that we're, like we're talking about, we're reprogramming our neural pathways and music is a big time programming tool that's been used for years to program us that we're not good enough. So <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're turning that around and what's in the past is in the past and we'll let that be. And we can create the future because every choice that we make in the present moment is creating the future. So don't think that what you do doesn't make a difference because everything we do everything you do everything i do makes a freaking difference in the world rock on so that's why today i've invited a very special guest a friend teacher um <laughs> there's there's so many things about <laughs> lonnie dueck did i say your name right yeah lonnie dueck hmm, that i adore mm. lonnie um i'm gonna i'm gonna officially read the, the official introduction, and I'll do the unofficial, is a Reiki master, a teacher, an amazing visual artist, and a yoga teacher. She's also the owner, caretaker of Sacred Space called Soulistic Studio right here in Hollywood. Actually, you walked here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like on Harrison Street. Awesome. <laughs> So, Lonnie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I love everybody. I really do. I don't like everybody, but I do love everybody. Um, <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when I think of you, you're, like, you're, you're in a special pile. Um, and, I, and I'm going to say you're in a special pile because I see your heart. And when I talk about people who... When I was saying, do what you love and imagine what you did as a child and do it now, that's that's you for me. <laughs> that's you in a nutshell, like doing what you love. And, and your inner child is like, is here all the time. And I really admire that and I acknowledge you for that because you are an example. You're so humble and so beautiful. Now, I, I'm going to I'm going to sing you a rap song. <laughs> what a honor. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Let's see. Lonnie. Lonnie, Lonnie. Give you want a beat? Give me a beat, white boy. Uh. Lonnie, Lonnie, she's so bright. She walks and she lights up my life. She uses Sharpies, she draws mandalas. She uses her voice and she calms you down. Lonnie, Lonnie, she's so bright. She walks in, yo, she lights up your life. Lonnie, Lonnie. Lonnie, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. I loved it. <laughs> copy of that sing a song by you okay <laughs> I, I will write the it'll be more. posted right after the show you can watch lines. it over and over and over again <laughs> <laughs> so Lonnie thank you thank you for having me here so there's so many things that I would love to discuss with you and thank you for you know just sharing your wisdom about what we were talking about mm -hmm. before and it's exactly what it's exactly what we envisioned for this time together okay you know it's just like there's so much but you know one thing that i would love to go to and we could start there is your art okay i would love to talk i i, I would love to know yes. more about your art yes. how it started for you and what it is that you do now and just yeah. tell us yeah the the story with the art it's it's wonderful i i really like to um share with everyone the story uh, I never took an art class in my entire life. Uh, I was these little girls that were drawing pictograms uh, with the eyes all over the place. And uh, like not even the moon and the sky were in the proper place on the page. I was just a mess. Uh, I remember a while ago, someone gave me a Reiki session. And she said after the Reiki session, I didn't even know what Reiki was. For me, Reiki, Tai Chi were the same sounds or the same thing. Well, so that was a while, about eight years ago. And she said, why don't, why don't we sit down and start to um, express what you feel, like through a mandala? What is a mandala? You'll see, she told me. So the only thing that I had was a white page, uh, a circle in the center. And she said, just grab something, a crayon or 
or a marker or a pencil, something. And just do something. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, I did something. Of course, a pictogram or something extremely silly. Anyway, uh, I left that day. This was in Aventura. I came back driving to Hollywood, feeling overwhelmed, feeling sick, feeling tired, mad, like every feeling that you can think of that we described not good. <laughs> Actually, it was me releasing a lot of stuff from the Reiki session. I didn't know that. And it was beautiful. Now I can recall it was that. So when I, when I actually got home, I said, this experience of creating some art was interesting because I feel like relieved. What was that about? So I remember that I had a notebook that night and I started to paint some mandalas. They were getting better. They were still a mess, to be honest with you. And I have them and it's pretty funny to see them. It looks like my daughter's. But um, it was me. So the following day, I discovered a beautiful place called Michael's. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, this is heaven. This is for someone that likes makeup, it would be Sephora. Okay, for me, it was oh, Michael's. It's I like, <gasps> I think I spent like $300 buying different things to, to explore what this art bag was. How old were you? This was a while, a while. It was about eight years ago. Oh, but that's recent. Yeah. Wow. I never painted before. So, uh, what I did was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was just, I remember I went back home and I started to experience things. For some reason, the mandala was keeping me inside of a circle. I needed to expand myself. So I was trying to break the mandala somehow. And then I said, the brushes are not okay because the brushes are separating myself from the page. I need to use my fingers. So I started to do finger painting. And then I said, a page is not enough. I'm going to go to a canvas. Canvas was too cold. I decided to do wood because wood was Mother Earth. So I, instead of going to Michael's, I discovered Home Depot, another place, beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had large pieces of wood uh, that they were custom cut for me, like different shapes and different sizes. I was like, my God, this is heaven. My hands were dirty. I was painting on wood. I was expressing myself. I was emptying myself from emotions. That's what I discovered. That's why one of the classes that I have right now, it's called Manifesting Through the Arts. Because I feel that there's so much we can express without using the spoken word. Sometimes because of the language barrier or because we're shy or because of whatever reason we impose ourselves that we have, uh, we don't speak. And when we don't speak, then we accumulate stuff, we get blocked, our chakras get blocked, we get sick. So there's so many illnesses we can prevent just by speaking our truth. And there's not only necessary to use the spoken word. Um, using the art, it's an extremely beautiful way where you can actually use shapes and colors and uh, use the brushes, your fingers as myself. And now a new face in my life, which is the Sharpie art, which is just I go with my markers all over the place and I create art. <laughs> uh, so that moment was the beginning. And then from that day on, I started to try to get better without thinking I was painting like six or seven hours in a row realizing that I've been painting for so long because my back was hurting. I was painting on the floor. and, and With so, your fingers? Yeah, with my fingers, just on the floor. I, I mean, I, I on a canvas or wood, but my, my back was bending yeah. to the floor. So just because I was uncomfortable, I was realizing that I've been there for nine hours maybe. Not because, I mean, time was not passing for me. I was connecting so much. I realized that I was meditating. My mind was completely in a stillness place. My fingers were moving, but I was connected. I was creating, like, connected so much to source that I, it's like if someone was trying to uh, tell me, look at me, am I looking good today? My attention was not there. I was somewhere else. That's when I realized that I started to paint my meditations, and that wa that's why most of my, my paintings at the beginning are pyramids. I was doing a lot of shapes, and then I went into the sacred geometry, a lot of figures, which was extremely interesting. Now I can see. Um, then I remember that I did a lot of whimsical art. Uh, they were pretty much going to my childhood phase and being a, a girl again, which is a... Because I'm, I'm very intellectual and, and spiritual on one side and I'm completely goofy and a little girl on the <laughs> other side. And I do have both. <laughs> so the art was manifesting that. I had my, my second geometry and very kind of sophisticated abstract art. And then on the other side, the whimsical aspect of me. So that was a phase. And then I started to explore different things. And uh, it's been a way of expressing myself wow. since then. I'm so fascinated with the, the finger painting. So are all your paintings 300, by hand? 300 paintings just done by fingers without any brushes, just 
playing with the colors, ruining my nails. Yes, that's incredible. Yes. No manicure. <laughs> And, wow, uh, and that connected you deeper. So I, I'm wondering too, how how was it for you, the art and the depression? How did those two work together? Did it help you? Yes, yes. I have to say that I cried many times when I was painting, but I was releasing. Releasing, it's a good thing. People I would imagine, associate yeah. crying to it's that it's not a bad it's a bad thing. For me, crying it's emptying myself from the things I don't need anymore. And so any any way that I can allow you to cry, fantastic. Go go for it. Do you offer anything connected with those two things? Crying. <laughs> Crying and, and art, yes. The oh, yeah, let's and come art. and cry together. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, I do. I do. It's we like have, yoga, you know, yes. just see what comes out and just well, like I be in space. We like in yoga classes too because you're very much connected. It's yeah. to yoga. We are, we are yoking so many things. There's unifying of the soul, of the body, of the spirit. And, and art is the same way. Mm. You know, when you, at, at this point, to answer your question, um, I do offer uh, private, and also we have some classes uh, during the week, which is manifesting through the arts, and some people call it medit art, because we do a guided meditation, and then we get to express ourselves through the arts. Oh, wow. uh, what I what I provide is we have a nice table, we put some cloth, feathers, we put uh, also stickers, crayons, pencils, acrylics, finger paint, like kids finger paint, and uh, just shiny papers, anything that you can think of, uh, also objects to recycle. So we we just we do a meditation with with healing sound and a theme, and then we just put that on a paper. And for some reason, something extremely ha extremely wonderful started to happen. I was very curious to do uh, a courses on psychic development. Uh, I started about two years ago, and I did about five or six. I didn't want to be a psychic. It was not my intention, but I wanted to develop my Reiki practice more, so I could be more intuitive to the energy field. So that's the reason why I did it. But it's interesting because one of the things that happened was I started to understand what people were creating in the art. And I was reading the paintings afterwards. So when they finished, oh, do you like it? Oh, yeah, but do you know that ta -ta 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 -ta, I was describing the painting perfectly, like things that, going, that they were going through, like if it was a tarot card or I don't know for other mediums how it works. Yeah. But so it's been like that lately. Someone creates... And through the textures, the colors, the movement, the lines, messages come to me. And I share them. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. It's almost like reading somebody's handwriting or calligraphy, but, you yeah. know, through yeah. the art. So you do these classes at your space, Solistic? Yes. yes. Wow. And even the painting happens in there. Yes. So you do yoga classes, you have painting classes. And also the Reiki. Meditation, Reiki. Reiki classes, meditation. And we have the Reiki circles every Thursday at 730. And you're a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I laugh because one of my jokes um, in stand-up is, I, I, I find the title so funny, Reiki master. Yeah. Because people Mastering go. Mastering what? They go for a weekend <laughs> and they're like, I just got my Reiki master. And you're like, master? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, but I get the context. It's just titles. It's what? a title. I will tell you what I think it is if you want. Tell me. Uh, Reiki, Reiki, first of all, it's you can read a bunch of books and articles and nothing will tell you what Reiki is. Uh, Reiki has to be experienced. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else that I can say. Uh, for me, it was a life-changing uh, experience because it just showed me who I was. I was not this. I was not that. I was not what my parents told me that I was. I was this. Either you like it or not, this is who you are. So either accept it or start to shift yourself and change. So for me, it was actually removing so many layers that I had over me to be able to see myself. So I'm blessed by that. Because of that, I decided to do the Reiki one to understand it and be able to do the self-healing, which is placing your hands over your body in different centers, which are the chakras, or just using the auric field, which is on the energy field outside of your body. Um, I did the sec for the second time, I did a Reiki one because I didn't feel that I knew anything. I just had a diploma, but I didn't know anything. And uh, so, and I stayed there. I did for a couple of years, just the Reiki one, applying it on myself every single day. And in every situation where I was feeling sad or, or you know, sensitive or depressed. And then I said, I want to do it in someone else. I want to share this because it's been changing my life. I painted in less than two years, 600 paintings. Something was happening in me. And I said, there's no way I can keep it. This is like having the most beautiful and, and tasty candy in the world. Share it with your friends. So I was so impressed that I wanted to share what Reiki was. So when I did the Reiki 2, I was like, now I'm able to help people on Reiki circles. Because when you're a 2, you can help a master when there's a Reiki circle. I did the Reiki 2, and I feel that I didn't know enough again. 
I'm a Virgo, a very perfectionist person, as you can imagine. <laughs> so I did the Reiki too again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I started to go to a place on, on Hollywood Boulevard, close to 441, uh, going two times a week to just offer my Reiki healings for free and participating in the, in the Reiki circle. And I went from not feeling anything to feel that I was even lying to myself because Reiki for, was nothing to feeling my hands shake, sweat, uh, tingle, and even people feeling, my God, you, there's a heater coming from your hands right now. So that's how experience and practice shifted my, my own practice. Oh. And I didn't like to call myself um, master when I did the mastering. The reason why I did the master was because if I studied two times level one and two times level two, I wanted to be that teacher that people don't have to go two times to learn. To learn. I wanted to be able to teach people from the first time and know that my students can come to me and ask me a hundred questions and even get together with me 10 more times and I won't charge a cent because that's how it should be. So I don't call myself a master. It's a title that it's given, but it's a teacher. That's what I am. I teach Reiki because I love Reiki. You know, sometimes I think things get lost in translation. Yes. You know what I mean? I love. So, yeah. So I the, love that. And it's coming from the movie yeah. and I love that phrase. <laughs> like coming from the English language and you hear master, you're like, really? You're a master? Um. <sighs> Yeah, but, oh, wow. So you, you completely just shifted my, you know, I have my Reiki 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. and um, But I get the practice is what, it's... It's, it's like yoga, Sisi. It's like yes, yoga. Yes, and it makes you believe more. Because when I did my Reiki 1, my experience was, well, we all have this already. And somebody's put a label on it now yeah. and is giving me a certificate telling me I have the, I have the power. You know, Full. and so it was interesting. And, and sometimes people say that they say, well, why do you need to go do Reiki if we all have that within us? You know, and, and they have this perception of like, it's you don't need to go do Reiki. Like we already have that power. So what is it about going through Reiki one and two and then being given the Reiki that activates something? Well, the attunement process, the attunement process would be like a port. It's a key to open a portal. That's what it's believed. We all sense the light. We all feel God and we trust that God is there. We all feel the sun. We all feel the sky. Through There's something magical that happens when I draw my symbols that it's that what you're attuned to when you do Reiki. And those are considered tools to open that light and that, that power of source to pass it to someone else. The Reiki healer is just a healer. It's not, it's not healing anyone. It's just passing the light from the universe to a person through the hand. So we become a nail. It's coming through me and I'm passing it to you. The attunement process are symbols that we draw and they work as a portal. So it's like we put a key there, we open that, and the light comes. And I feel it. So wait, the, so the light is already passing through. That L is existing in all of us. And then the symbols create the portal for the light to come through different? It's, I felt a difference when I did my attunement. Why? I'm going to give you an example. When we have a stomachache, we immediately place our hands on our stomach, right? When we have a headache, oh my God, my head is hurting, so we place our hands here. And we do it, we do it unconsciously. It's like something that we do just, just by being who we are. We can heal ourselves. We're just expressing uh, the intention of, being, of feeling better. The Reiki is giving you a tool. Apart from feeling the light that we constantly feel when we trust the universe, we are blessed with a healing power, which is our hands start to heat up and we start to feel this power of light that comes through the hands that I started to feel with the practice, not with the attunement. It was practice after the attunement, practicing and practicing. And I went from cold hands to extremely heated, sweated hands in two minutes just by drawing the symbol connected to the light and doing my prayers so that's why it's so hard to believe and to explain because it sounds like something that it's magical and that maybe a magician can do and why why am i going to believe this so i'm always saying you you have to experience a session you have to experience what it is and feel it in your body yeah there's a reason why for me without knowing that i was an artist i had an artist inside we all have something inside Sometimes we can discover it by ourselves. Sometimes we need some help. And the help can come in different shapes. We can do yoga and discover it, which is one of my favorite things in the world. And Reiki was one of mine at the beginning, before knowing yoga. I got in touch with Reiki, and Reiki shifted my entire existence. Uh, something magical happened that it's even hard for me to define. Wow. We have the intention to heal, but sometimes intentions is not enough. We need the tools. It's like... 
it's like when you want to teach someone if you're not a physician and you want to you want to heal someone else or you want to teach chemistry if you don't know how to teach chemistry you ne- you first need to go and understand what chemistry is and then you're able to teach someone else mm-hmm. i have the intention to teach you but i don't know it you know i feel it's like we all have it's just you know putting your hands on somebody mm-hmm. just touch is healing on oh, its yeah. own you know so we all have that and we all understand it and what i'm getting from you is like Reiki gives us the tools yes. to, I'm going to call it like supercharge, you know, or whatever the word master is. Master tools. <laughs> <laughs> master tools to masterify <laughs> your healing powers of, mm-hmm. in your hands, you know. So, um, Lonnie, we're going to go on a short break. And afterwards, sure. I want to talk more with you about more of your superpowers because I know you have <laughs> super masterful powers. So we'll be back on yes. soulflowradio.com. Tune in to get tuned in. This is Z Nation on SoFlowRadio.com. Yoga Gangsters, a Miami-based nonprofit organization, provides free yoga programming to youth and young adults who are either at risk or in crisis. The Yoga Gangsters mission is to use yoga as a tool to teach youth self-awareness, self-respect, and self-control. If you're interested in establishing a program or wish to make a contribution, contact Marisol at 305yoga.com or explore their website, yogagangsters.org. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions, providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support, hardware and custom build computers let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly monthly or annual rates to fit anyone's budget call key information solutions now 954-973-3374 that's 954-973-3374 or visit keyinformation.com SoFlowRadio.com remains on the air with free archives thanks to the support of our listeners. Help keep us on the air by clicking the donate button on SoFlowRadio.com. And thank you for your generous support. Now, back to Z Nation, your weekly dose of inspiration on SoFlowRadio.com. <laughs> and we are back. Hello. <laughs> My superhero <laughs> friend, teacher, Lonnie Dueck from Solistic Studio here in Hollywood, Florida. So, you know, I said before I wanted to talk about your superhero powers. And here's what I would love (laughs) to just, I'd love to hear a little bit from you. So you're a business owner. You're an artist. You have multiple businesses going on. You know, you teach and you're maintaining a studio and you're an artist. And I also know you have children. Yes. You have three Mm -hmm. beautiful children. Mm -hmm. And my experience of you is you do all this with a lot of grace. And the grace I see comes from your practice, comes from something so deep, so spiritual within you. And I was wondering if you can share, you know, there's there's a lot of mothers, maybe fathers too, who are like you, you know, or have multiple jobs, multiple businesses and children. And there's something special about you and, and, and who you are Thank with you. your children. Thank so you so much. I'd love to just have you share about that. I feel that, you know, there's no right or wrong. I have many friends, for example, that they they chose to stay at home and be a mom. And they're wonderful moms. And they cook and they clean and they're wonderful housewives. Even if they're single or they they have no partner, that's that's totally fine. Um, And there's some others that they feel that there's something else that they need to do. They love to be moms, but they don't want to be full-time moms. They want to spend some time with their kids, but maybe they want to do something else. And that, that was my place. I always, I have always been very independent, but I always been a, 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 um, a seeker, uh, seeker of happiness, seeker of truth. Uh, not only in my personal life, but also the people around me. Um, I'm a keeper of good people, and I also learned to let go of people that are not serving my best interests at this point. So, and and also to feel good about that, because I used to say, no, I don't want to lose people, because it was something bad to lose people. No, it's just we we need to let people go to allow people in. That's, a, that's the flow of life. Um, my, my advice is to look at yourselves. It's to everybody should look at themselves. Mm. If there's a mom or there's a dad out there, the only, only parents, and there's a, another need they have, 
maybe they feel that they need time for themselves or they need there's there's a hobby that they like or they feel that they go to work and they come home and they're just parents and work parents and work and they're happy fantastic if there's something else that they need there's always place for everything and everybody out there the thing is that what do you like right and finding what you like there's many different ways books are amazing tools friends are amazing tools <laughs> the beach is an amazing tool meditating going to reiki circles going to yoga classes going to meditation circles drumming circles uh, every, there are so many so many things lately that of spaces where no one will care what you do how much how much money you have how many kids do you have you're a soul there so when you're being treated as a soul you can dress you can go in pjs if you want and with your hair frizzy <laughs> and at that moment you can ask yourself if there's something that else that I need in my life right now what is it so if we surrender to the universe and we open our hearts that's the moment where some light will come if we surrender from the universe to the and we open yeah. our hearts <laughs> that's the moment where the light will come quote Lani <laughs> no, that was so beautiful yeah so because there's nothing we can control right So at that moment I feel that an interest will come some the right person will come and talk to us like hey I've seen that you've seen doing some yoga would you like to come and do some yoga with me and you don't know how and when but things happen and you end up opening a yoga studio or being the main teacher of a fantastic very popular yoga studio so life moves like that that's how I discovered my own path I was in search of myself of what else was there out there for me and that's how I got into the place where I am and I'm still not stuck I'm moving on I'm moving with the wind like the river I'm just flowing uh, I don't know what's coming next I would I don't know what door is going to close and what door is going to open but I'm trying to just flow and be there's space for all of us to be fantastic there's no need for someone to drown for someone to be successful there's there's space for all of us to succeed uh, even if you don't know what you do right you may do many things wonderful you just experience different things try instruments try try painting try running walking try different exercises talk to friends uh and just experience yourself even if you say my god i'm so bad at everything no bad at everything that you tried already keep on trying we have an entire life of of many minutes and hours to experience who we are and there's space for all of us to be extremely successful so that's what i want to say i found myself you can find yourself wow It's like it all comes back down to just what do you love to do and ha- what makes you happy. And I think, you know, people who have children and businesses, it's just we get lost. Yes. Well, whatever it is, not even, you know, it could be anything. We get lost in our careers. And we get lost in the labels that we create that we create for ourselves. Yes. I'm a mother, I have to do this. And you know, I I'm noticing for myself all the expectations that not only I put on others but that I put on myself. I shouldn't be I should be somewhere else in my life. I should be here. No. No, you're This perfect. This is where you should need exactly. to be. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you know we we we're very good especially as yoga teachers and light workers to say these things to others, you know? And I always say whatever comes out of my mouth, you know, is I'm saying it to myself first. Always. Of course. Of <laughs> Because course. Because we are our number one teacher, you know, look within and they always say know thyself. So thank you for sharing that for all the people listening. Yeah, like explore what really makes you happy and what lights you up. Yes. And keep yes. exploring. Yes. Don't give oh, up on yourself. No, because we we change. There's there's chapters in our lives. We have so many chapters. Maybe something was the only thing you needed at one point in your life and then maybe you need that and something else and maybe the first thing you don't need anymore. And it's okay. That's why we it's okay to let go of things. Mm. People yeah. remain in the same relationships forever or maybe they change and that's okay. It's just what do I need? And then just be okay with where you are. Exactly. Don't go into that vortex. Lani, where can people find out more about you? Where can they see your art? Yes. Uh well, my my studio it's called Soulistic. Uh the website it's www.bsoulistic.com. Um The letter B? Yeah, B E. No. Oh, B E soulistic.com. Yeah. Uh I do have a Facebook page that it's uh under my name which is uh Loni Dweck. So facebook.com/lonidweck. Um what else? My phone number for the studio I can give it. It's yeah. 786 Five four seven nine four one five, and an email address to get in touch with me will be l o n i underscore number one at yahoo dot com. Very simple. 
Wonderful. Uh, oh. We are located on uh, 1909 Harrison Street. This is downtown Hollywood. So everybody's welcome to come. Just visit. I'm not open all the time. I schedule sessions, and some of the classes are mostly at night. But uh, it's always, we have a beautiful store with crystal stones and uh, an Indian and uh, Thai handmade purses that I love to have. Beautiful. So everybody's welcome to come and check it out. Thank you. Thank you, Lonnie, for Thank joining you. us today. Thank you. Thank we're you. Gonna, what a pleasure. <laughs> we're going to go into our final meditation. Yeah. Our metta meditation. Let's take a deep breath in together. When you breathe in, breathe in life. Breathe in life. When you breathe out, release any tension, resistance, negativity. You can close your eyes if you're in a place where you can close your eyes. And take this moment to connect with you, the most important being in your universe. Metta, loving kindness, to myself first, may I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free. May I be free from hatred, anger, animosity, ill will, and jealousy. May all beings everywhere be happy, be free. May all my actions, my words, my thoughts contribute to that happiness and freedom for all beings. Om Luka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Peace 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 I leave you with these wise words that were once said to me. This too shall pass. I love you all. I appreciate you. I acknowledge you for who you are in the world and for being a beautiful human being. Thank you for tuning in to Z Nation. This is Zena Degaya, and I'll see you next week. Namaste, blessings, peace. You're listening to SoFloRadio.com.